I felt that this video is so important that I decided not to make it uh, extemporaneously like I do most of my uh, demonstration videos, but I actually wrote a three-page script for it, so I hope you'll bear with me. Hopefully the effect of this script will be to shorten the video um, and, um, and add value. This is about four distinct advantages of the HWD or how we did app. Calendaring, tracking time, prioritizing work, and tracking progress. As far as calendaring is concerned, um, uh, Google, the Google Calendar is a really popular one. I use it myself. Uh, here's what mine uh, looks like right now. Uh, we happen to be in the COVID lockdown. Um, and um, when I look at the month view, I can't see a whole lot. Like if I look, what is, what is, what is today? Uh, today's the uh, 26th, right? And looking at the month view, I can't, I, if I want to know what's going on, uh, on, on May 26th, I have to click that. Uh, so really the, the month view of the Google calendar is pretty much, uh, useless. Um, but in the, in the quick base calendar view, I come over here. And I look at uh, I look at a calendar. There's no content on here, but um, when you when you add content to a calendar, instead of uh, for, forcing the content um, into um, in, into this kind of a, a straight jacket, um, the week rows stretch, uh, they elongate so that you can see everything that's happening in that day no, uh, no matter how how busy it just the things just stretch it's really cool um, another difference between the google and the quickbase calendar is that the quickbase calendar can connect to people as i'll as i'll show you well if we come here and uh, add a plan all right or this is like an event you will notice that um, I'm able to uh, relate the uh, the event on the calendar to my accounts, um, uh, either uh, Jones or the Jones job or the Jones project. I'm able to uh, designate an activity type, which can be help really helpful for filtering, sorting, and so on. And uh, I'll get into uh, explain what a one thing. Uh, is but if it's basically important important to do's um, and I can also uh, uh, schedule schedule my to do's um, none of these you can do with a, a Google Calendar um, so it does it connect to people yeah right here in your accounts does it connect to things uh, yeah um, what does it say here first choose a customer yeah and um, uh, what about recurring events uh, the Google Calendar does a great job with recurring events. The QuickBase Calendar does not. Um, email reminders, Google Calendar uh, provides very specific um, uh, email reminders that uh, describe the event. QuickBase can do email reminders, but they're general. It just says you have an event coming up, but it doesn't say what. So that's not very, really very helpful. Um, does it coordinate with Google Meet? I've found this to be hugely uh, helpful especially during the COVID uh, lockdown we're all doing zoom meetings and Google meetings and whatnot and um, uh, the Google uh, calendar does and so that you can send uh, invites from your Google calendar you can schedule a meeting and send invites through the calendar that's terrific uh, quick base no so what I conclude from this uh, comparison of calendaring is that the Google calendar is great for personal use recurring events, specific reminders, and coordinating with Google Meet. The QuickBase calendar is great for work and organizational use because it can be customized to connect with and relate to people and things, helping integrate and coordinate the organization. So for example, um, it, uh, uh, if we look at employees, for example, each employee can have their own calendar and when they manage their calendar uh, 
uh, all the events on their calendar uh, 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 aggregate in the organizational calendar. Um, accounts, that is customers, prospects, and so on, here's Jones, can have their own calendar. The Jones Project. Uh, the Jones Project can have its own calendar. See here? The Jones Job. can have its own calendar. And you can add plans or events from any place in any of these, and, and they all roll up into the, uh, into the organizational calendar. Uh, these one things, I'll get talk about these more. Um, what I, um, I've got a couple of really important one things. One is to plan what's for lunch, and the others uh, meet about a company picnic. And uh, if you've got important one things, you can schedule when you're going to do those one things and relate them to people. You can relate them either to uh, employees or to accounts. Um, so the 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 um, the quick base calendar is great for work and organizational use because, like I say, you can customize to connect with and relate to people and things and help integrate and coordinate the organization. So the the Google Calendar is great for your personal use and you know, uh, handling recurring recurring kinds of things and reminding yourself about them. But when it gets down to the heavy lifting of getting work done in an organization, I feel that the Quick Base Calendar offers advantages that that uh, the Google Calendar can't even begin begin to match. Uh, number two, tracking time. Have you ever heard of any of these quips? Life is what happens while you're busy making other plans. Man plans and God laughs. Do they resonate with you? I'll bet they do. Because life is full of surprises, I've found that if you build your timekeeping practices around your expect expectations, you'll miss out. Just today, I received three unexpected, unplanned phone calls that took two hours to field that totally changed the day's priorities in a better direction because they improved my understanding. Uh, my experience, I've been tracking my time as if it were money for five years. Uh, I'll come over here to my own time management app and go to the home page. And you can see that I have pie charts showing me categorically how I spent my time year to date, two years ago, one year ago and uh, today. Uh, if we look further down, you, you can see a report here that shows um, uh, the total hours that I have tracked since from 2015 to 2020. And you can see that since 2017, I've tracked everything because uh, there are about 5,800 and some, some odd um, waking hours in a year if you, if you get eight hours of sleep. You can see that last year, I was slightly sleep deprived because I, I, I logged uh, 5,900 uh, hours. That means I got less than eight hours of sleep a night. Um, so that might, that might seem uh, extreme and OCD to you, but I have found out that if we look at work versus leisure, um, uh, you can see I've been a busy bee in 2020. I've, I've spent 45.7% of my time uh, working so, f uh, so far this year. Typically, it's more like a third. Uh, so uh, you, you, can, you can see here the overall uh, averages um, uh, over the five-year period, 35% working, 65% uh, not working. Uh, even though these are roughly, you know, here's a 24-hour, 2,400-hour work year. Eh, I was a little lazy in these years. I did a did a fairly even 2,000-hour work year here, and um, I put in. Uh, on, uh, we're not even halfway through the year yet, and I put in over 1,000 hours uh, working in 2020. Um, I've been working overtime to help people cope with the uh, the, the virus, the pandemic crisis, um, but. But my point is that um, I feel that whole day timekeeping is worthwhile because uh, even when you're working a full-time year, like in this case, uh, 
there are there are almost six thousand hours waking hours in a year and we define a full-time job as two thousand well what about the other four th four thousand and, and change what about the other two-thirds doesn't that matter to you isn't it noteworthy isn't it important i would say it is especially if you're not making enough money that means you need to spend less time in leisure and more time working so you need to look at where your leisure hours are going so you can figure out what to stop doing and uh, and what to start doing uh, in order to work uh, work productively um, in his book thinking fast and slow right here Daniel Kahneman I've got a book review uh, got a, got a book got a review of the book here on here on my website makingendsmeet.com if you want to explore the book reviews by the way um, you can go to the home page and go to uh, book and software reviews and here 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 they all are and the uh, Kahneman review I wrote in uh, 2017 um, but in, in his book uh, thinking fast and slow Daniel Kahneman points out that slow or system 2 type thinking is triggered by surprises it rattles our assumptions and forces us to slow down and pay attention to what surprised us. If we build our timekeeping practices only around what we plan, predict, or expect, we'll blind ourselves to the very surprises that could change our lives for the better by revealing new opportunities or better ways of doing things. For this reason, after five years of experience tracking my own time as if it were money, I've concluded that whole day timekeeping, WDTK, is the only way to go. It simplifies timekeeping by eliminating the question, is this noteworthy? Because as it turns out, everything is, especially the surprises. Whole day timekeeping consists of creating a new record every time you stop doing one thing and start doing another. As you proceed through your day, you watch the Today Report, which lists all these records in sequential order. The records include fields for your contacts, activity types, projects, and so on. Here I'll show you. So if we come over uh, here, back to the uh, how we did app and we go to the home page and we um, add an, a new activity this is what I'm talking about in the activity record the uh, we have an um, employee we indicate whether it's personal or work I call this leisure uh, and you enter the start and stop time and it calculates uh, it, cal it calculates the time you do not enter the hours you enter the time okay and um, and then you're able to specify the division of your co the div your company's division if your company is divided into, into divisions um, and, and and employees straddle straddle divisions in smaller businesses that's often the case employees don't strictly work in one division they'll straddle them so that's why I have this uh, division record in the uh, division field in the activity record. You got an activity type, got your one thing. Um, Again, in competencies and skills, this is uh, beyond the scope of this of this video. But uh, suffice it to say, we you're a, we're able to facilitate continuous uh, improvement with employees uh, by helping them improve their. Uh, 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 enhance their competencies by gaining skills um, the, the account the customer job uh, 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 or, or the project so um, uh, the record includes fields for contacts activity types projects and so on that just showed you then when you need to summarize it's all there at your fingertips requiring no extra effort to compile as you have seen um, as you have seen uh, here uh, there are many, 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 many ways to uh, summarize uh, data once you have it. Uh, and these are just a, a few examples. I've got some ha handy dandy pie charts here, got some, uh, su some summary reports here. Um, but the ways that you can summarize data once you have it uh, at your disposal is really limited only by your needs and your imagination. Um, Ironically, once you get into the habit of tracking time as you go, it literally takes no time to maintain. It just becomes another habit, like checking your email or getting a cup of coffee. Right. 
uh, prioritizing work, our third thing. The How We Did app synthesizes the work of David Allen, who wrote Getting Things Done, Steve Covey, who wrote Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, Gary Keller and Jay Papasan, who wrote The One Thing, into a single unified approach toward, as Allen calls it, getting things done. From, from Allen, we get the idea of prioritization, scheduling, focus, and regular review. From Covey, we get the Eisenhower matrix, which distinguishes between what's urgent and what's important. Covey's second quadrant activities, soft sharpening activities like researching, developing, and planning, are the kinds of things that characterize his seven habits of highly effective people. Second quadrant activities are important and not urgent. From Keller and Papasan, we get the focusing question. What is the one thing you could do that would make everything else easier or unnecessary? Like Alan and Covey, they also emphasize the importance of scheduling and focus. In the How We Did app, we keep a table of one things. We indicate whether it's important or urgent. Okay, So um, here in the How We Did demo, I've got a couple of one things here. They're kind of silly, actually. Plan what's for lunch or meet about the company's picnic. And you can see that um, we have a checkbox for important, and a checkbox for urgent, and a checkbox for now. And the the important and urgent, if I grid edit this for a sec, and I uncheck the urgent box, by default it's important. Okay, So urgent doesn't mean unimportant. Urgent means uh, both important and urgent. We, we never want to be doing urgent, unimportant things. That's just silly. Uh, but we do need to know if something is urgent, okay? Um, and then there's one box for, uh, there's a box for now, and only one, one thing, can have that uh, box checked at a time. And uh, urgent things are automatically highlighted, they become yellow, and and the the one thing that is has its now box checked, that is your current one thing, your real one thing, it floats to the top of the list. Um, so we keep a table, we indicate whether it's important or urgent. It isn't a garbage can of to-dos. Of, of to Ideally, the only entries in that table answering the focusing question are in a significant way. Uh, uh, the only entries in that table answer the focusing question in a significant way. They qualify to be one things. Once a one thing has been added to the list, it can be scheduled and done. All right? So, um, if I look at uh, if I look at uh, this one, see so it's it's got its own cal it's got its own uh, uh, calendar, and I can add a plan. I can plan. I can schedule the doing of this of this uh, of this one thing. All right, and I I pick when uh, when to start when to stop, and then it, then it goes on the calendar. It can be scheduled, and then it can also be done. All right. So when you do a one thing, you're uh, recording activities here. And uh, I can uh, the if I'm going to x out my my employee field for a moment. And when I do that, notice it says first choose an employee. Want to choose myself? Then it thinks for a sec and displays my one things. If I had it were a different employee, it would have different one things here. Uh, and and then this is how you record, keep track of uh, when you did a one thing. So that if I come back here, you can see that the, a one thing has both a schedule tab and an activities tab. All right. So when, here's when you plan to do it, and here's when you actually did it. All right. And this keeps track of uh, how much time it takes you to get things done, uh, which enhances your estimating and um, uh, planning and estimating abilities in the future. Uh, so once a thing, once a one thing has been added to the list, it can be scheduled and done. We record the doing of <coughs> the one thing by linking it, linking it to the activity records in our whole day timekeeping, and. One things are designated to be uh, designed to be relationship related. Thus, uh, uh, each employee has their own list of one things. That makes locating the right one thing 
uh, as we record our activities easier because they depend on the employee. As we proceed through our day, we never have to think about all one thing, so that would be over overwhelming. To break it down further, this feature could be easily modified to be account-centric instead of employee-centric, as you see here. Thus, an employee could set and manage one things for each of their accounts. So, if we were to do that, and we recorded an activity, You can see how if I X, X out my employee field that says first choose an employee, I could change this. So it would say instead first choose an account, which is like a customer or job or a project. All right, so you can get more granular about these. And I found this to be, in my own personal practice, that's how uh, that's been hugely helpful. Um, a rule of working with the one things table is, as I mentioned, that only one one thing can have its now box checked. That is your real or current one thing. Once you do it, you record the date that you did it, uncheck the now box, and check the now box of the next more next most important one thing, like this. All right, so I'm going to look at our our one things, our highly important one things. I will grid edit this report. I will uncheck the now box on this one, check the now box on that one, type a T for today, which which puts today the today's date in the completed field, save, and look what happens. It went away, all right? Uh, and I have one one thing left on my list, okay? Now it I didn't I didn't delete it. We're looking we're looking at a report called unfinished business, all right? But we also have a report called List All that shows all all of your all of your one things on there. Okay, but uh, the home the home page the home page on this one things table is unfinished business. Um, okay, um, yeah. Once you do it and record the date that you did it. You uncheck the now box, check the now box of the next one, and most important one thing. When you do that, like I, as I demonstrated, the completed one thing goes away, and the new one thing floats to the top of the list. You can filter your one things by urgency, interest, importance, and contact. Right? Those filters are over here. Now, I don't have much content in this demo but, uh, version, but you can see the, uh, the dynamic filters over here in the left margin. Um, and uh, we we can we can um, we can adjust these filters too. Uh, to we can filter you can filter however you want, but I would recommend uh, filtering by urgency, interest, importance, and contact. I knock out the urgent ones first, then evaluate the rest according to how well they answer the foc focusing question, which again is Papasan and Keller's. Uh, what's the one thing you can do uh, that would make everything else easier or unnecessary? Because they're linked to activity records, you can see how much time it took to complete your one things. This can be very helpful for planning and estimating purposes in case your one things um, are of a recurring nature or are similar to other one things. This same technique can be used in job and project management. More about that later. Okay, so that's our third. Uh, our third is uh, prioritizing work through the use of the one thing, um, I would say, doctrine. And then finally, tracking progress. As I worked through QuickBase University to become a certified builder, ta-da, see, this is the part where you say, ooh, ah, uh, clap and be impressed. Uh, I found that conventional wisdom or customary practice for determining percentage complete on a project took a top-down approach. It presumed that an informed supervisor or manager decided how complete a project was and checked boxes and records accordingly. If the manager had a lot of boxes to check, ways were suggested to automate or expedite the process. But I got to wondering, how do they know? How do they become informed? We're all familiar with situations in which a project emerged half-baked, as it were, premature software rollouts that are still buggy or, God forbid, unsafe. This is how Quicken died. For example, uh, Quicken was a great program, but they did that. They did a, some premature software rollouts, and it basically died. 
um, or, uh, God forbid, unsafe buildings open prematurely for occupancy because of short-term political or financial pressure or arbitrary deadlines. I got to thinking about quality workmanship of the European style in which a project like the Sistine Chapel, you know, if you've ever seen that book, uh, with uh, not the book, the movie uh, about uh, Michelangelo with uh, 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 um, Rex Harrison and uh, Charlton Heston, uh, where the, the, the Pope, Rex Harrison, is asking Michelangelo, how, how long is, when, you, when will you be finished? And uh, and uh, 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 Michelangelo is up there in the scaffold, pa painting, painting on it. He's lying on his back, painting, painting the ceiling, and he'll say, he says, "It's finished when I say it's finished," or "It's finished when it'll be finished when it's finished." You know, <laughs> we'll get there when we get there. Um, so uh, you know, when uh, a project like the Sistine Chapel was done, when the workers themselves, the organization's nerve endings, determined that it was done. In the trade guilds, much respect was conferred upon the experienced craftsmen, who really knew when a thing was truly finished, with no haste or potentially hazardous shortcuts. Working with whole-day timekeeping, I've included a percentage complete functionality that provides a feedback loop between workers and supervisors. The workers themselves indicate their opinion of percentage complete on a task. The next time they work on the task, the total percentage complete so far is displayed in the new activity record, like this. Okay, so I have a project, a silly little project here. If I look at my Gantt chart, it's the Jones project. And uh, the first phase is planning, and the first task in that phase is consult my wife. The second, uh, task in that phase is consult my kids, and the third task uh, in that phase is consult my therapist, all right? And um, you can see I have the predecessor uh, relationships set up, and here's a little, here's a little uh, Gantt chart showing uh, each of these uh, two-day tasks happening in succession. And um, in, the, uh, in the activities, I have one activity recorded uh, of, um, have a look at that. And, um, and, um, it's a, it's the, it's a project in the three ring circus division of my company. Mm. And, um, whoops, I've, uh, classified the activity wrong. Let's change that. Uh, this project. Um, and uh, we're working on the Jones project, and um, I did I did uh, I did fifty percent uh, this last time. So when I go to record a new activity on that project, and I pull up the uh, the Jones project, and I pull up the phase and the task. Let's see, I was consulting my wife first, wasn't I? It tells me that the task percentage, uh, the percentage complete so far on this task is 50%, okay? I'm getting feedback as I'm working. So if I record that I uh, did uh, I did 25% more um, uh, today between the hours of, uh, of uh, 3 p.m. and 4 p.m., Let's see. I think I need to specify specify my division here. Three ring circus project. Whoops. Okay. Uh, let's see if I look at if I look at Paul. Oh, sorry about that. I had a little technical difficulty. I needed to resolve. Anyway, I recorded uh, twenty five percent on that latest project. I I I. Uh, I had I brought up brought up the the task consult my wife. It was fifty percent complete so far. I recorded another twenty five percent, and now the total com, total complete uh, is seventy five percent. I'm looking at the at the phase um, the phase record on the pro, on this project. Um, the planning phase the planning phase of this project, 
And now, because the uh, uh, because the uh, uh, the the first task in this three task phase is seventy five percent complete, that means that the phase itself overall is twenty five percent complete. All right. So uh, working with uh, uh, or where, where was I? When the task is 100% complete, it's automatically checked off. No supervisor checks the box. All right. Let's let's try that. See if that works. All right. So we add one more task to this. We got 25% to go. Again, we're in the three. We're we're in the. Uh, whoops! I don't want to add a task. I want to add an activity, don't I? Add an activity over here. All right, in the three ring service circus division, as distinct from the goat rodeo division. And uh, pull up the um, the Jones project, the planning phase, and uh, the consult my wife task. And uh, I finish it. I finish it today at uh, between um, uh, 4 p.m. and 5 p.m. Okay. Um, and uh, I save and close this. Whoops. Let me edit that. I did. I, I omitted the most important part. Sorry. Uh, cancel. I meant to go here to my activities. Uh, on the, this final one. You see how easy it is to correct mistakes. And I, I finish. I do the regular, the remaining 25%, save and close. And looky there. Uh, now this first task in the planning phase for the Jones project is 100% complete and it's, it's automatically checked off. And now the uh, phase as a whole is 33% complete. Okay. Sorry that was a little bumpy, but you see how easy it is to make make and correct mistakes. Um, when the task is 100% complete, it's automatically checked off. No supervisor, blah, no supervisor checks the box. The workers themselves effectively check the box by tracking percentage complete themselves. Likewise, does the process roll up the chain from task to phase, as you see here, uh, uh, to the project as a whole? The same thing happens when uh, these phases are, uh, all the phases in the project are, are complete. When this is 100%, the phase is checked off. Come over here to the Jones project record, and we'll look at the phases. Okay. Um, right now, this project consists of two phases, planning and permitting, and you see that uh, phase one is 33% complete, and th that means that the, uh, the project, uh, overall, the project is 17% complete, okay? And when the, the first phase is entirely complete, guess what's going to happen here? That box will be automatically checked because the workers say this, is one, this phase is 100% done, okay? All of the, let's see, uh, likewise does the process roll up the chain. When all the tasks in a phase are 100% complete, so is the phase. And the box is automatically checked. When all the phases in the project are complete, then and only then is the project truly done. All of this is accomplished by worker knowledge, not management opinion or fiat. This makes the manager's job easier now because they're not making risky guesses anymore. They're simply watching, navigating, and adjusting, working with workers, showing proper respect and appreciation for their knowledge and expertise, and benefiting from it. And how does this net navigating work? Well, it works off the, if we come um, here to the home page, what they do, what the managers do, is they watch the Gantt chart. Uh, this is the summary. Uh, and really, you would you would just look at this in, in whole and as a whole, and this would list all of your projects. Okay, um, the, the the task detail we got a lot more columns, so there's a lot lot less here. But say that um, say that the whole the whole project got postponed. All we need to do 
is edit the first task and change the start date. Say so it got, post, got, got put, pushed back a month, okay? Boom. Everything else is postponed accordingly, okay? And, uh, and um, uh, you can see that these dates, these dates changed. Uh, the, the dates of the uh, second, third ta task changed because the the date of the, of the first task, task number 109, uh, that they depend on, uh, uh, and, and that they happen after, these are called dependencies, uh, was changed. So in, 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 in postponing this task, I also post automatically postponed everything else that depends on it. And that's just standard, standard Gantt, chunk, Gantt chart functionality. All right. But, um, but what we're doing now, th this is how managers adjust, right? They have the Gantt chart that is, that is their, uh, their tool. Um, so they watch, they, they, they watch, they navigate, and they adjust working with workers, showing proper and respect and appreciation for their knowledge and expertise and benefiting from it. So in the end, everybody wins. So that's my 36-minute uh, video on uh, calendaring, tracking time, prioritizing work, and tracking progress in QuickBase. Thank you for taking the time to look at it, and um, I'll go ahead and correct a couple of typos I noticed in the script while I was creating this video and make it available as well. So you can have it kind of as, uh, keep it as notes uh, for following the video. Thanks a lot.